In this video we'll do another central force problem where we use Newton's laws to solve circular motion. Uh, in this problem we have a barrel of fun. This is a ride that spins around and as it spins around it gets to a certain speed and they drop the floor out and the student or rider appears to be pushed up against the wall and held there by an invisible force. In reality of course the rider is attempting to go on a straight line at constant speed due to the inertia and the wall is pushing on the rider in order to make them follow in a circle. Now one of the things that's required when you pull the floor out from underneath is that the friction force be large enough to hold the person up against their weight. It should also be noted that that force is actually the force between the rider and the clothes and then there's a friction force between the clothes and the person's skin. So uh, hopefully they're attached into their clothes uh, and not in some sort of slip out thing because their clothes could stick and they might not. So in this problem, let's go ahead and work it. We're going to be asked uh, what is the expression for the minimum tangential speed required to prevent the passenger from falling when the bottom is dropped down. We start by drawing a free body diagram. Uh, we'll just represent the person as a block. Uh, there's weight that's our W. Applied, there's no applied force. Normal, yes, there's a surface of contact here and the wall is pushing inward. Tension, no, there's no ropes. Friction. Now if there was no friction, the person would fall because you'd have an unbalanced force in the weight. So the friction, the static friction force, has to be pointing up, opposing the person from falling. Last but not least, we put an axis. There's X and there Y. I put my X axis along the radius of the circle, so the acceleration in the X direction will be the centripetal acceleration. We now write Newton's laws. Some of the forces in X is MAX. Some of the forces in Y is MAY. The person, we don't want them to accelerate in the Y direction, so this is zero. We have the normal force pointing inward, that's minus n. This is equal to the mass. For the acceleration, the acceleration along x is along the radius. This is the centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. And it points inward, and inward is in the negative x direction, so it gets a minus sign. Over here, we have the friction force minus the weight is equal to zero. So in order for the person not to fall, the friction force has to equal the weight. Let's bring down and get rid of the minus signs here. We have the normal force is equal to mv squared over r. There's equation 1. There's equation 2. So far we haven't talked anything about the coefficient of friction or minimum speed or anything else. So here's the thing. <clears throat> this friction force, which is the static friction force, is less than or equal to the maximum static friction force. So, but F is less than or equal to F max. And F max, the maximum static friction force, is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Now using what we have here, F is less than this, that means that the weight must be less than or equal to F. So using equation 2, we have that the weight is less than or equal to F max, and therefore the weight, Mg, must be less than or equal to mu times n, but n is mv squared over r. Now one of the things of course to note is that the mass cancels. And so we now have v squared is greater or equal to 
G times R over mu. Make that G a little better. And so the tangential speed for this thing to work has to be greater or equal to the square root of G R over mu. Now let's look at this. If this was a radius of infinity, which would mean a straight line, then you could write any speed you want and you wouldn't fall down. No, I shouldn't say that. If this thing was an infinitely, um, let's back that up. That's not quite true. If this was a straight line, if the wall didn't turn in, then you would have to have an infinite speed to stay up. If this R was zero, if it was extremely tight, very, very small, you wouldn't need much of a speed because the moment you tried to go, you'd be bumping against the wall and it would provide a big normal force which would provide plenty of friction. If there was no gravity, if g was zero, then you wouldn't have to worry because you wouldn't have to have any velocity to stay up. Now, you can't change g, and you don't want to make r too small because if you make r small, you won't be able to put a lot of riders in the right, so you won't make any money. So, on the one hand, you don't want r too small. You don't want r too big either. If you make r too big, one, you're going to have to have a much bigger velocity, which means you're going to have to have a much bigger motor to spin this. The bigger r is also going to be heavier. The heavier this big drum is, the bigger the motor again you're going to have to spin it. So that may not even be possible to get a big enough motor. So you want to make r small, but not too small. And you want to make mu big, because if you make mu big, you don't have to have a very big speed. Therefore, you don't have to make it too uh, large a motor. Now, on the other hand, you don't want to make it too low of a V because then it's not exciting. So you have to play with all of these things. Of course, if you welded the person, then they definitely wouldn't fall. So another thing to consider from a practical standpoint if they were building one of these things would be if you made it really rough, you could increase the coefficient of friction, make mu bigger, but then in, you would be rubbing potentially against your back and your skin and you would cut up your skin. So you want something smooth. Turns out the thing they usually use on the sides of these is a rubber that's kind of sticky, but is relatively smooth. So they don't scratch your back, but you also have a high coefficient of friction so that you can stand up when they drop the floor out. This is one of the points where the wonderful ideas of physics come into play when you try to put them into a practical application. To a physicist, we're more interested in the fundamental laws of the universe and how to make them work. Doesn't mean we can't solve those sort of things. To find the minimum, we now just simply take the equal sign rather than greater than or less than. So the minimum speed is the square root of g times r over mu.